Free the land, free the land. Starting to see people get up on here. I'm going to just let people come on up in here. As you come on this live, please share this live with your timeline and your Facebook friends and groups. I'm gonna just wait and let you know some people get up in here before I get into this real quick topic. I'm on a little bit early today, y'all. Cause I wanted to hurry up and get it in. Peace and power, bro. Peace and power. I'm a little early today because I wanted to get it in early. While everybody is up and out or at home. So I'ma just give it time. I'm gonna give it time and let people. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and share it with my timeline. On my other page. Let me go ahead and share it. Yeah. Bingo. There we go. Free the land, free the land. As you come into this live, please share it. All right, here we go, here we go. See, a lot of people probably out, probably ain't up on here right now, but it's all good, man. We're just going to let them, we're going to let them fall into the live when they see it. But if it's some groups y'all want to share this in, please share it in some groups also. So we can discuss this topic that I wanted to discuss today. Uh, Being that this is Juneteenth, um, it's quote unquote Juneteenth that I, you know, y'all know me. I, I'm not going to do no sugar coat when it comes to our story and our history, our objectives, our aims, um, what we struggling for, what we fighting for. Um, you know, my thing is this, before I get into the real topic, my thing is this, let me go ahead and slide into it is that we got to understand, man, that. Liberation comes with education. You feel me? Liberation comes with education. And with that being said, I just wanted to come on here and make this point that, you know, when it comes to our history, our story, I'm the type of individual, I like to put things in a proper context. You feel me? Um, African historical materialism. Um, you feel me? So, my thing is this, man, is that year after year, year after year, we have been struggling and fighting for over like, you know, generations to get this historical context of our story put out there properly. You feel me? But you got to understand that the black bourgeoisie still exists. And being that the black bourgeoisie still exists, we know that the black bourgeoisie works for you know, the ruling class, the oligarchy, you feel me, of the United States empire and the global, you know what I'm saying, oligarchy and the ruling class of the global elites, you feel me? Um, the black bourgeoisie, I got a real issue with the black bourgeoisie when it comes to our history because it's like they don't put out the proper context and the historical context of our story. It's watered down. It's so watered down. You see what I'm saying? So we having generations and generations 
who are getting these watered down historical stories and, his, you know, um, I call it diseducation, disease education that Stanley Tukey Williams, you know what I'm saying, articulated very, you know what I'm saying, articulate. Is that this is this is diseducation, diseased education. And what do I mean by that? I mean, um, education that's not properly put in the proper context for our people to understand their historical material reality. You see what I'm saying? So my thing is this is that generation and year after year, they're still getting this watered down story of black people, new African people, African people. Misnomer African Americans history in this country. You see what I'm saying? Especially pertaining through the epochs of our enslavement. You see what I'm saying? The epochs of our enslavement periods and the history that came before that and after that. You see what I'm saying? It's a watered down uh, black bourgeoisie controlled by the establishment who's controlling these Negroes paying these Negroes to put out, you know what I'm saying, revised, watered-down history to keep you colonized. African people, new African people in America specifically who I'm talking about today. You see what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm very tired of it. You see what I'm saying? Because you got these so-called African-American historians. You see what I'm saying? You got these so-called African-American historians who are bought off you see what I'm saying? Black bourgeoisie telling our stories from a watered down perspective to keep us passive and to keep us controlled. You see what I'm saying? Because you notice these African-American so-called scholars and these so-called African-American historians, they're always teaching passive, sweet, watered down history of the misnomered African-Americans, new Africans in this country. That shit is watered down. So they give you one, they give you one visualization of our history and story and existence in America. And they leave out the most important history of it all, which is our resistance, our military campaigns. You feel me? And I think that shit is very disingenuous to our people and it leaves our people stuck being passive and wanting to hold hands with the same people who are murdering and genociding you every day for 500 years in this goddamn country, man. You see what I'm saying? And they putting out false history and they putting out false narratives about who we are, period, about who we are and what we did and what we struggled for and what we were fighting for. You see what I'm saying? Including certain terminology that they have taken control over to make it look like something else than, than what it is. One word is freedom. One word, and the other word is independence. And, 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 and this, yes, this is leading into Juneteenth. This is leading into Juneteenth. Until I get into the main subject of this video, which is the Fade On Rebellion. You see what I'm saying? The great revolutionary, the great Julian Fade On. And his 14,000 Black Liberation Army in Granada, in the island of the West Indies, in the Caribbean island, the extension of the new African nation in the Caribbean islands that came to an end on this day. How about that? June 19th, 1796. Write that down. Let's do some homework. Because a lot of people tend to leave out the southern region of the new African nation. That extends from the Caribbean islands into South America. Where some of our first nation states and resistance and rebellions sparked that. Initiated that. That started our story on, that was built on resistance. This is something you got to understand. People. Black people. New Africans. Misnomer African Americans. And African brothers and sisters across this globe. In the Western Hemisphere. Our story began with resistance let me say that again in the western hemisphere the african diaspora our story started with resistance military retribution military campaigns military accurate resistance and this shit 
gets left out year by year by these bourgeoisie, African-American, scholarship, fake-ass historians that's controlled by the ruling class of the United States of America. So we're going to correct this shit today. Because this is a day of resistance too. Why does resistance always get left out of the story? Because you got paid off African-American so-called institutions and scholars who don't talk about Africans whose existence in the Western Hemisphere was rebellion. That's right, rebellion. Slave revolutions, slave insurrections. You feel me? It's our bloodline. It's in us. Those ancestors they kidnapped were military tribes of people, nations of peoples, national people, nations. You feel me? They sparked retribution, slave insurrections, slave rebellions on the way to the Western Hemisphere, on the boat, during the trip, soon as they stepped off the boat. This is facts. It's not in your school education curriculums for a reason. It's not in your school curricula curriculums for a reason. Because you still have these bourgeoisie African-American scholars putting out this false narrative of pacism. And that leads to what I'm saying when it comes to Juneteenth. I'm, I'm not here to diss Juneteenth. I'm always here to put our story in the proper historical context. Remove the lies. Remove the revisions. Right? Remove the lies. Remove the revisions of the European colonialists. The European settlers. Who have watered down and passed down to Negro, slave, African American scholars and African American institutions that don't teach about resistance. Some shit that's in your blood. Whether it came from the Africans on the continent or it came from the indigenous black people that was on this land before the European nations and settlers attacked this landmass, right? You see what I'm saying? So when we come to things like resistance, rebellion, this shit so-called spooks people or it makes you disassociate with people. This is, how the, this is how the ruling class of America wants it. It wants you to get away from who you are. We're Maroons. Write that down. M-A-R-O-O-N. We're Maroons. We're Gullah Africans. Or the proper terminology. We're Gula. Let me say it in the proper tongue. We're Gula Africans. We're indigenous we're from indigenous nations, whether it's Africa or North America or the West Indies. Because these are our ancestors. This is who we descend from. And guess what? The foundation of all these national peoples and these uh, ethnic formations and groups of people that we know as nations were military people were resistance people. Their existence started on resistance in the Western Hemisphere. All we did was fight back, shoot back. You feel me? That's your history. Don't run from it. Don't be scared of it. That's who you are in your blood. When we're talking about the blood that's on the red, black, and green national flag, it's the blood that was spilled or the blood that was that was spilled from the enemy by military Africans, Maroons. Maroons. We are Maroons. Period. However you want to look at it. But your bourgeoisie African-American teachers, your bourgeoisie African-American teachers don't want to teach your babies this history. This is why a lot of things are problematic in our existence in our society in North America because we haven't taught our boys, our girls, that they're fighters. Spiritually, mentally, and physically. 
We're fighters. We're military trained. We're military minded based off ancestry. Period. Based off ancestry. We're military bloods. We're blood brothers and blood sisters. We are nations of military tribal people. Nationals. We are nationals. Period. I'm a new African revolutionary nationalist. My context of a historian is putting it in the proper context from a nationalist perspective, a pan-African perspective. Something else that gets left out by the bourgeoisie black Americans, so-called scholars of African American history who don't teach pan-Africanism the way it should be taught. You feel me? You feel me? Who don't teach it how it's supposed to be taught. And it makes me sick to my stomach. And I'm not going for it. Because I'm not going to keep passing. I'm not going to keep passing passive pseudo history. That's controlled by our historical enemies on to my babies. And your babies. Which is our babies of our nation. I'm not passing that. Damn. They have to know that their spirit is resistant. They have to know that their whole existence was established on resistance. Period. And they also have to understand that this is a human rights struggle, not a civil rights struggle. It's a human rights struggle. We're fighting for the dignity of humanity and being humans in a global community as new Africans, Africans, or whatever ethnic nationality you so choose. It's your human right to be whatever you want to be. Period. So, and let me just move slide into this real quick with the Juneteenth thing. Is that, again, we're letting black bourgeoisie, American so-called quote-unquote leadership... Bourgeoisie, so-called leadership, and also the African-American teachers and scholars, so-called, who's controlled by the ruling class of the United States of Empire, put out, revised, watered down Juneteenth history. They're not telling you the story. They're not putting it in the proper context. Let me get to one thing about this. Peep game, peep game. What Malcolm X told you? What did El Hajj Malik El Shabazz teach us before he went away from here? Is that the thing you have to understand is that when the white man gives you something, when the white woman gives you something, when the power structure gives you something, that means it's no longer yours. It's no longer a threat. It's no longer a threat when they give you something or they finance something or they make something legal under their doc doctrines or their documents or their contracts or their legislation. When they do that, that means it's no longer yours. It's for the ruling class in capitalism. Juneteenth is going to be commercialized. From this day and on. To make money. Because I know a lot of y'all don't see it. And don't see what white supremacy is all about. And what European imperialism is all about. What white capitalism is all about. They're doing it again. They're doing it again. They're going to give you Juneteenth. They're going to so-called legislate it into legalities and making it a national holiday to get your money. To get your money. Now watch how all these slave European corporations start to feast on Juneteenth next year. It won't be this year, next year. Pay attention, come back to this video and 
Remember what I stated on this day today. June 19th, 2020. 2021. Pay attention to Juneteenth and how it becomes so big and so commercialized. I even seen today, I even seen today in New York City, in New York City, and it's something else I got a problem with, I seen in New York City, Africans still lock arming and marching with European Americans but this is the kicker for Juneteenth, right? They're marching in New York City for Juneteenth celebration. Locking arms, locking arms, and this is why I don't like Black Lives Matter, locking arms with European Americans waving our national flag. How about that? White people, Chinese people, what's Red, black, and green, pan-African flag waving all through New York City right now. Turn your TVs on. I have an issue with that. That red, black, and green flag is our flag, not their flag. That's our flag. And that goes, again, to the education from the bourgeoisie. You're trying to turn the red, black, and green flag into a multi a multiculturalist movement no we're not doing that we're not doing that we're not going to desecrate the unia acl pan-african nations flag like that we're not going to do that we're not doing that trying to turn it into a multi a multi-culturalist flag and movement you got different ethnic groups waving the red black and green flag in new york city marching the happy june team happy june team that is steps of commercialization of capitalism see y'all don't y'all don't even know how capitalism works you don't even know how capitalism works that flag stands for a nation let's get it correct and I don't even like the Juneteenth flag. I don't even know where that came from. With all that red, white, and blue in it. I don't even know where that flag came from. I don't even acknowledge that flag. That's not even a flag. Not, it damn sure ain't no nation flag. You feel me? So, that Pan-African flag is our flag. It's a nation flag. Period. That flag means you're seeking independence. That flag means you're trying to set up a nation. That flag means you're seeking sovereignty. That flag means you're seeking separation from your historical enemies. That's what the red, black, and green flag. It's not a culturalist flag. It's not a multiculturalist flag at all. And that goes back. Let me double back real quick. How the bourgeoisie educational system is teaching our people false pseudo history about the word independence when it's tied to Juneteenth. Juneteenth is not our Independence Day. Do you have a nation? I'm seeing people posting memes all over social media now. It's our Independence Day. That's not independence. Where's the independence? Where's the land? Where's the nationality? Where's the government? If you're independent, I need you to go back and look up the definition of independence, people. What is independence? What is freedom? These two words are being thrown at our people loosely by our enemies. We can't let our enemies tell us what independence look like. We can't let our enemies tell us what freedom looks like. When you are people that were born in resistance, born in the wind, of resistance true freedom and true independence is what you were snatched from on those boats a nation state is what you were and what you are today you're a nation state of people Juneteenth is not Independence Day for New Africans it's not Independence Day for black 
people in America. You don't have a nation. You don't have land. So take that out of your vocabulary. Don't fall for the revisionist history of what you are, African people in America. You don't have land. You don't have your own industry. You don't have your own economy. You don't have your own nation state. So no, Juneteenth is not Independence Day. And I don't care who don't like it. I'm not teaching my babies pseudo history. I'm not passing our mistakes down to our babies. I'm not going to do it. Tell your babies the truth and tell it how it is. Period. Tell your babies how it is. Juneteenth is not Independence Day for black people. You're not free. You're political prisoners. You're a colony. Let me say that again. African Americans. New Africans, you're political prisoners of war. You're not free. And like I said, I'm not dissing Juneteenth because I know the context of Juneteenth and the context that's being put out there already because the Europeans are trying to commercialize it, capitalize off it, capitalism, and the Negro gatekeepers are trying to capitalize off it. By putting this passive bullshit out there, talking about Juneteenth is Independence Day. No, it's not. No, it's not. Juneteenth is not my Independence Day. It shouldn't be your Independence Day neither. If you know what true freedom, true sovereignty, true independence True nationhood looks like, if you know what that looks like, if you even have an idea what that looks like, you feel me? And like I said, because I'm not going to get too much in that already made a lie about Juneteenth. You can go pull, you can go put that in the search bar, hockey Quaid Shakur, Juneteenth, sick from freedom. So I'm not even going to get into that. I already broke that down last year. Oh, uh, we know it's Juneteenth is the fact that our political prisoners that were held in bondage in Texas found out late that they so-called emancipated you. And we know emancipation is not liberation. Those are two different things. Emancipation is not liberation. Overstand that. Write that down. Because you don't have freedom. You don't have a nation. We have one, but it's not yet free. Because we are not, we are a nation of people. We're just not free yet. The nation is not freed yet. And so many died and sacrificed themselves. And so many are still in prison today for that sacrifice to free the land, to free the nation. So you gotta look at you gotta look at Juneteenth from a historical context. Africans died. They didn't have nowhere to go. When 1865 came, they had to stay on the plantation. They had to stay in an in a abusive relationship with their captors. They had to stay in an abusive relationship with their captors. Sharecropping. Write that down. One of the most racist economic systems that ever came out of slavery. Sharecropping. 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 All oh, that's cool, sister, but all oh, that's cool, but that's still not the proper context of Juneteenth. Because they wasn't emancipated either. They wasn't emancipated either. They never left the plantation system. This is the part y'all don't get. And this is the part that y'all following, y'all falling for every year they come around with Juneteenth. They're making you think that they were freed. They making you think that they went on to have this luxurious life after slavery. That's not the context. That's not the proper context. No, millions of Africans died in 1865. Millions of Africans died in Reconstruction from hunger, disease, mental illness, uh, straight out murder. Straight up murder. 
They didn't even leave the plantation, sister. They never left the plantation. This is something you have to teach your babies. 1865, Africans did not leave the plantation. They had nowhere to go. They died from hunger. They were put in contraband camps, sister. They were put in contraband camps. The Northern Army treated Africans just as worse as the Confederate States did. They put your ancestors in contraband camps and let them die from serious diseases and hunger, poverty, no money, no nothing, sister. So what is the celebration about? Tell me, what is the celebration about? Because none of the things that they're portraying ever happened. Never happened. It's not, that's not our story, sister. That's not our story. It wasn't beautiful. It wasn't beautiful. Devil's punch bowl. Exactly, brother. Devil's punch bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Research that. Devil's punch bowl. The genocide camps of the devil punch bowl. Go research that. It wasn't glorious. No. There, you know, and like I said, I'm not telling you what to do. But if you going to do it, put that shit in the proper context to your kids. Don't lie to your babies. Because the revisionists are already doing that. The European power structure are already lying to your babies and trying to commercialize this struggle. No, we need our struggle from the raw, told, true perspective of new Africans. Genocide is what happened. The ma'afa that continues is what happening. Period, sister. There is no celebration. Celebration of what? We ain't getting no we ain't getting no freedom. And it's not, and I and I knew you was gonna slide that in. It's not a remembrance day either. What are we remembering? What are we remembering? I refuse to pass down to another generation that some white people came to save black people with the help of new African blacks that were in their armies. I'm not passing that down. That's cool, though. Shout out to all the new Africans that sacrificed themselves, that, that sacrificed and joined the Union Army. I, I, I salute those ancestors. The ancestors that joined the Union Army, I salute them because I know what they truly were fighting for what they truly were fighting for. What they were truly fighting for ain't what you got today. It ain't what you got today, sister. Those ancestors that joined the Union Army and, and, and came to the South to free our ancestors, they, it, it, they were fighting for something that, you know what I'm saying, a lot of us still can't conceive today. So they chose to either liberate themselves or die trying. That's our historical context. Everything in our historical context is resistance, sacrifice, liberation, period. We are resistant people. We are resistant descendants of resistant nationals of people. That's our story, sister. So I'm going to leave that topic on that note so I can finish this off. With what I really made this video for is the fact that, yes, I'm not telling you to commemorate your ancestors on Juneteenth. Do that. But make sure that you control the narrative and control the story and tell the truth to your babies. Don't pass down that revisionist, uh, colonized education to your, 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 your damn seeds and your babies that's coming behind you. Don't pass that down. Tell the true story what happened in Juneteenth and after Juneteenth. Like I'm always telling y'all, please study Reconstruction. Please. I'm begging you, please study Reconstruction. 1867 to 1877, after Juneteenth, please study Reconstruction, please. Please study Reconstruction. Reconstruction should be in your, your educational platforms every time you're teaching, Reconstruction. Because if you understand Reconstruction, then you will know why we're in the position we are today in America. Reconstruction. Get W.E. Du Bois book, Black Reconstruction. Get W.E. Du Bois book, Black Reconstruction. Reconstruction was genocide, transformation of 
plantation slavery into economic wage slavery, sharecropping, contracts, convict leasing, uh, Jim Crow, um, black codes, pr the prison industrial complex you see today. Slavery never ended with Juneteenth. It transformed and morphed into the system that this uh, empire was founded on, which is capitalism, which in, in turn is racism. Racism and capitalism are the same thing. It's an institutionalized, racist, political, economic, conquering system. So when we're saying white supremacy, we're not saying white people are supreme. We're not saying white people are supreme to new Africans or African peoples. We're not saying that because we know that's not true. Don't look at it in a spooky way. We're not saying white people are supreme to black people when we say white supremacy. No, we're saying the system of institutionalized capitalism, racism, imperialism is conquering, is colonizing. The system is a conquering system. White supremacy. And before I get off here, let me get into this real quick, but I wanted to hop on here. Today, another great day of resistance in our history and time. In the West Indies, in Granada, in Granada, one of the most military revolutionary campaigns from Africans in the African diaspora in the southern region of the Republic of New Africa, the New African nation in the West Indies, in the Caribbean islands. Let's give homage and praises due to Julian Faydon and the Faydon Rebellion that ended on this day, June 19th, 1796. Julian Faydon, write that name down. Julian Faydon. J-U-L-I-E-N F-E-D-O-N A mulatto And that's what makes this story even more powerful A mulatto brother A mulatto new African Led one of the most Accurate One of the most accurate Slave rebellions Slave insurrections And military cam campaigns On the British Empire the British settler nation in history in the Western Hemisphere on from this brother. This brother led a military campaign of Maroons in Granada from March 2nd, 1795 all the way to June 19th, 1796. A year. A year. This brother led a 14,000 men and women army for a year, for a year, putting in massive work on our historical enemies of the British Empire to smash the capitalist system of slavery on the Granada Island and to bring into existence an all-black New African Republic on the island of Granada. Julian Faydon. Julian Faydon who was inspired by the Haitian revolution. Julian Fadon, a mulatto brother. The Fadon Rebellion was sparking out through the period of time when rebellions were taking place all across the West Indies and South America in places like Cuba, Jamaica, Coro, Venezuela. During the 19th and 20th centuries, man. This is history that we have to document. We wasn't just sitting over here in the Western Hemisphere and not fighting back. No, we were shooting back at all costs by any means necessary for freedom, sovereignty, land, separation, nation, period. Have you ever heard of that? A mulatto African in Granada leading 14,000 Africans on a slave plantation against the bourgeoisie class of the British Empire on the Granada Island. Write it down. Today is a day. It's a sacred day. Pour some libation out for Julian Fadon and those 14,000 brothers and sisters who in the end, because they didn't lose, 
They didn't lose, but in the end, the British Empire quelled the slave revolution of the Maroons of Granada, but it still was a victory. It still was a victory. Because those brothers and sisters that live on that island, our brothers and sisters on that island, those new Africans in Granada, has a history that we can teach to our babies and pass down. We have heroes who took the ultimate sacrifice, which is death. Like Malcolm X said, don't use the word freedom if you're not going to die for it. Freedom comes with death. Liberation comes with death. The ultimate sacrifice for African people, new African people, is death. Because we know Africans don't die. Africans don't die. We just transform and move to the ancestral land with our ancestors. We don't die. Energy don't die. It's never the end. So when an African martyr, when an African martyr chooses death, because it's either liberty or death. It's either liberty or death. There is no in-between. When the white man came over here conquering all these lands, he only had two things on his mind, liberty or death. He don't know no other language. He only knows liberty or death. African brothers and sisters, that should be your mentality with your historical enemies. Liberty or death. There is no in-between. There's no equality. There's no equality. You can never have equality with your historical enemy. Never. You can't reform no historical enemy. You can't reform your way to liberation. You can't reform your way to freedom. You can't reform your way to nationhood. It's impossible. It has never been done in history. It has never been done in history. No nation of people have ever got free through reform. Julius say Don, Julius say Don, for a year, and those 14,000 African brothers in Granada knew only one language that the white British Empire spoke, liberty or death. Give me freedom or I die for it. And I would die trying. So what are you doing, new Africans and Africans in America? You think you're going to reform this enemy? You think you're going to reform yourself to liberation? You think you're going to reform your way to freedom? You think you're going to reform your way to land? You think you're going to reform your way to reparations? How? When your whole chronology and history was resistance when your whole existence in history scientifically in this struggle was military campaigns slave resurrection i mean insurrections slave rebellions that's your history african when you wake up and look in the mirror you're looking at the ancestors who died the ancestors who died in military campaigns maroons gula africans New Africans, freedom fighters, freedom fighting is in your blood, Africans, new Africans. There's even a mountain, before I get off there, there's even a mountain in Granada. It's the only symbolism left of the great freedom fighter, Julian Fadon, which is called the Mornay Fidon Mountains. This mountain, this mountain um, area, geographic area in Granada, because I'm putting this information out there for those Africans who ever get to travel to Granada. Here's a place that you can go visit and pay, you know, and pour out some libation and venerate these ancestors in Granada. Go to the Mornay Fidon Mountain. This mountain was a settlement of Maroons. This is where they launched their military campaigns for a year on the British Empire in Granada, which ended on this day, June 19th, 
1796. So pull out some libations today if you want to do that for Juneteenth and do your research for Julian on Julian Fadon, the unconquerable Julian Fadon. And guess what? What makes this new African story so beautiful? What makes this new African story so beautiful is Julian Fadon was never captured. How about that? Julian Fadon was never captured captured. To this day, they still don't know whatever happened to Julian Fadon. They still don't know what happened to Julian Fadon. They don't know if he escaped. They don't know if he died trying to escape, but they never found Julian Fadon in the physical form ever again. A true general, a true military-minded general who chose to rise up against the European Settlers, man. Let's honor this ancestor for Juneteenth. We must honor the ancestors of resistance, people. Stop trying to hide our ancestors who chose liberty or death. The same individuals that are still in prison today, Dr. Matulu Shakur, Jaleel Mutakin, Kamal Siddiqui, Mumia Abu-Jamal, Russell, the Maroon Schultz. Veronica Bowers, Jojo Bowen, Abdul, Alu Gabala, Shakur, Hashima Jensa. Feel me? Asata Shakur, the Maroons of all Maroons that's in Cuba today. Nana Asada, the Maroon of all Maroons. They chose liberty or death because that's what pumps in this blood. That's what that red means on that flag of the red, black, and green. Liberty or death. Which one are you going to choose? Are you going to choose oppression or liberation? America is oppression. New Africa is liberation. Which one are you going to choose? I'm going to leave that question up to you so you can understand what are all these protests for? What is the end goal of all these protests? What are you truly fighting for, black people in America? What are you truly protesting for? We're not, we're not fighting for multiculturalism. We're fighting for nationalism. We have to separate. Separate is essential. It's natural. It's scientific. It's biological. It's mental. This is who we are. We are separatists. And we want our own. We want our own land, our own economy, our own independence, true independence now. Book reference, book reference. This book is called Winds of Phaedon. Winds of Phaedon. Inspired by true events of the slave rebellion that took place in Granada. Written by the OG Dunbar Campbell. Please go get this book. Write the title down. Winds of Fadon. A Granada novel inspired by true events of Julian Fadon and the Africans who rose up on the Granada West Indies Island for a year. The Maroons of Granada. This is a great read. I recommend it. And I'm going to end it on this note. I'm going to read what it says on the back because it's so dope. In commemoration of our great revolutionary leader, Julian Fadon. A slave rebellion like no other, led by a slave owner. In a time and place like no other, with people like no other, a British island with a French population when British and French hated on each other. African slaves and white owners when blacks and whites hated each other. Brown slave owners when blacks distrusted them and whites hated them. A perfect storm. Listen what I'm saying, because this is Marcus Garvey. When Marcus Garvey said, look for him in the whirlwind, because we, are, we all channel that Oya, we channel that Oya natural energy of our ancestors. Oya is the wind. Oh, y'all, it's the wind. 
Oh, y'all, it's the wind. He say, a perfect storm in an imperfect, imperfect time, an imperfect place, all it needed was a spark. Some say the spark started when a young white British officer fell in love with a black daughter of Faye Dawn, the rebellion leader. Maybe. 200 years after the island exploded in revolt, when the moon is full, listen to what I'm saying, when the moon is full and the trees bend in the wind, some say the winds of Faye Dawn are returning for revenge. Let me say that again. 200 years after the island exploded in revolt, when the moon is full and the trees bend in the wind, some say the winds of Fanon is returning for revenge. Isay, Isay, Isay. So when you look at that full moon and you see that wind start to bend up, oh, y'all, look for Faye Dawn. Look for Julian Faye Dawn in the whirlwind. Look for the Granada Maroons in the whirlwind. And catch me in the whirlwind. And I'm going to sign off on that note. Hockey Quaid and Shakur, man. Shout out to all the Africans that tuned in on this Juneteenth 2020. Let's start to hold and control the narrative. Land, reparations, separation by any means necessary.